Well, there you go. I probably should have known that. Yeah, I had to look it up. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down every Easter egg and callback we were able to catch in Bluey's longest episode yet. Needless to say, major spoilers ahead. Let me show Mama sign. Oh, of course. Number 20. Poor Jeremy. This poor gnome has been through it. Poor Jeremy. Jeremy is constantly seen taking falls, hits, and other generally objectionable behavior. The sign, unfortunately, does not afford him any breaks. The gnomes are set out on the front lawn in their wedding attire, which makes them very conveniently placed for Frisky's outburst. She's so nice. Don't tell me how to feel. Whoa. Whoa. Sweetheart, this. Sorry. Even before she kicks him, though, a small crack is visible on his hat from what is likely the ramifications of the bandit-initiated incident several episodes earlier. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Jeremy, no! If even Jeremy was unable to come out unscathed, we hate to see whatever damage Bandit took. Hey, what? what are you doing? Ah! Oh! Phew! Number 19. Husband. Husband has to be one of our favorite bingo bits ever. So, husband and Sheila, should we have a nice slow dinner at the restaurant? Sure thing, babe. For being just five years old, she's remarkably good at pretending to be a devoted husband. From the deepened voice to the mustache to her signature catchphrase, Bingo has husband down pat. Oh, it all looks so good, babe. So much so that even with zero dialogue and a makeshift stash, he's still recognizable. At the end of the sign, when the healers have set up dinner in the empty playroom, there's a moment where Bingo balances a fry under her nose and transforms right before our eyes. We guess husband is also happy the healers get to keep their home, babe. Number 18. Pretzels Mums Any scene with the kids from Glass House Primary is always a gem, and this scene is no exception. After Calypso finishes reading the first story to the class, we get some great tidbits from the kids. One of them is from Pretzel, who, it turns out, has two mums. Yeah, like when my guinea pig ran away, my mums told me he might come back, but he didn't. Aww. We're always excited to see more diverse representation in children's programming, and this small mention from Pretzel hopefully means we'll get to meet them down the line. Well, I guess you can sit in my boat if you want. Oh, thanks. I won't take up much room. I'm a fisherman. Also featured in this scene is a sweet callback to the episode Army. Jack has loved playing Army with Rusty so much, he can't fathom conscription being something people would rather avoid. Why didn't he want to join the Army? Number 17. The Fruit Bats If you were too blinded by your tears to see the credits when they rolled, we don't blame you for missing this one. After we pan up to the night sky and some of the crew's names show up on screen, a horde of bats begin to fly across. This is, of course, a callback to the fan-favorite episode Fruit Bat. In that episode, Bluey wishes she could be one so she wouldn't have to go to bed since the bats are nocturnal. Night Fruit Bats! No, not Night Fruit Bats. They don't sleep at night. They're nocturnal. Good knowledge, kid. You mean Fruit Bats don't need to go to bed now? Somehow, though, we can't imagine she was very sad to go to sleep in her house that night. It's such a perfect way to close out the story. Number 16. The Police Officer The subtleties in this show always elevate it so much. Police! Oh, I don't need this. Just like the humor in Bandit and Chili's dog-related occupations, the police officer in this episode is none other than a German Shepherd, the same breed that is typically recruited as police service dogs in our world. We doubt every cop in the Bluey universe is a German Shepherd, but it's certainly a cute addition to the episode. And you're all good? Sorry for the mix-up. Thanks, Mr. Policeman! I wouldn't normally do it, but this is an emergency. Another similar detail is with the couple who first buy the healer's house. Oh, it doesn't have a pool? Oh, no, you won't need one. Queensland summers aren't that hot. The kids call them the dogs with no eyes, but in reality, they're water dogs. I think they do have eyes, but they're just covered by their fringe. No wonder they want a pool so badly. 
Number 15. Bingo's Big Girl Bark Bingo's used her big girl bark a handful of times since Yoga Ball, and we've even heard Bluey use hers on occasion. Enemies! Back at them! Ah, 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 ah. It's not working! Run! Ah! After all, being able to draw boundaries and stand up for yourself is important. But Dad, we don't want you to stop playing with us. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna get better at using my big girl bark. Bingo has just finished drawing faces on her feet, one of which is named Tina, by the way, when the movers seize her table. Once she catches them removing Bluey's bed from the house, though, all bets are off. Mom, the table went invisible. Hey, that's my sister's bed! Put it down! <coughs> she barks after them, and it's every bit as cute as it is heart-tugging. As it turns out, the only reason Bingo has been so easygoing with the selling of the house is because she didn't realize they wouldn't be able to live in it anymore. No, I thought we sold it but still lived in it. No, honey. Number 14. Cat Squad It could not be more endearing that these anthropomorphic dogs watch a cartoon about cats. What did you learn today, Caddy? How I behave doesn't just affect me. No, uh, what am I coming here to do? Oh, Dad, you're in the way! Cat Squad is seen in a few different episodes, either directly or through cameos, with its introduction coming in Season 2's library. In the end credits of that episode, we get to hear what is presumably the theme song to the show. Cat Squad! Cat Squad! The kids must all be pretty big fans because not only does Uncle Stripe have the song stuck in his head, Bandit does too. Uh, 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 cat Squad! Dad, the ladies! What are you allowed to do that? They both walk into the room belting out to it. Na 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 na! Cat Squad! Dad, the ladies! Uh, oh. What are you allowed to do that? Number 13. Chocolate Milk and Cherry there are always a plethora of characters making up the backgrounds of the Bluey world, many of whom we're very familiar with. In The Sign, we actually get to follow up on Chocolate Milk and Cherry from Trades. Ooh, look, honey. They were having some sort of dispute in that episode, which luckily got resolved by the end. Is that Cherry? Maybe. But they look like enemies. Yeah, they do. Why would you phone call your enemy? Maybe they had an argument and he's trying to say sorry. We're not sure how much time has passed since, but we get the reassurance that things are still going good for them as they can be seen standing together at the lookout. Nah, he's got a lift. <laughs> if you squint, you'll find them looking through the pair of binoculars over from the water dogs. Number 12, Greeny. In the transition from the girls being sad under the sold sign to the lookout where the water dogs are, two things can be seen milling about the sky. But one day, Midnight ran away. The farmer's neighbors came over and said, That's bad luck. The first is a bird with an orange head and white belly. Keen eyed viewers might recognize this as the same bird Brandy sees in onesies when she's lying on the grass. Because it's not meant to be. Considering the significant development Brandy has in this episode, we'd say that it's not just a happy accident either. The second object in the sky is, of course, everyone's favorite balloon from Mum School. After Greeny floated away at the end of that episode, it's super heartwarming to know he's still out there floating on. Will he be okay? Yeah, I think he'll do just fine. How do you know? Number 11, Mount Kutha. It's Mount Kutha for real life. Native Aussies might have made the connection to the IRL Summit lookout from the animation alone, but for the rest of us, we had to do our best with the, forgive the pun, signs. Ah, but not clear! When Chili gets out of the car and sees the sign for the lookout, her ears are covering a bit of the block text, but the location is actually spelled out for us. Of course. I know where you are, Frisky. Where are we? This is the lookout. Frisky and I used to come up here as teenagers to, um, think. Bluey is quite known for situating its locations in real-life places by copying architecture and other identifiable details, so this keeps nicely in theme with that. 
How did you find me? I know you like it here. I do. Number 10. Socks' development. For a good portion of the show, Socks could be seen on all fours and she was often non-verbal. This makes sense considering Socks is a good deal younger than Bluey Bingo and Muffin. But she's not even saying sorry! She's only one! She doesn't know any better yet. We have to teach her. As the series has progressed, so too has Socks. Can you guess what I was? Oh! oh Any um, idea, girls? What was Muffin? Ballerina! Yes! Yay! She's walking on two legs in this episode and easily keeping up with the other girls. And we've never felt more like proud parents. We've also been getting some Muffin character development lately, which continues into this episode when she can be seen buckling Socks' seatbelt for her. What's Bobo? It's the name of our car. There's no room for me! Oh no, Bobo's full! Number 9. Flossing We always love an episode where we get to see Rita and Janet make an appearance. The very beginnings came in Grannies, which showcased some really brilliant problem-solving for a then six-year-old. Bingo wants to floss as a granny, but Bluey insists they wouldn't know how. Her first solution, which is to ring her nana to ask as much, pans out poorly. Oh, look, you know, kids, I don't think I can do the flossing. Yeah, I was right! Oosh! Is this right? <laughs> Obviously, they have no idea about this relatively new dance move. In order to make two things true at once, Bluey decides to teach her grandparents the move over Facey Talk. They must have taken a liking to it because, during the wedding, the two are seen tearing it up on the dance floor. Number 8. The DJ Everyone knows a good party all comes down to the music. Luckily, Frisky and Rad are in good hands. The DJ they hired is actually the busker from Markets, who Bluey gave her Tooth Fairy money to. Whoa, five bucks? Thanks, matey. That deserves another song. Who likes to dance? Two, three, four. He must be the only busker in town because he's also seen at the end of dance mode when the whole family dances to his performance. It's possible he remembered the Healer family, or maybe they just requested the tune, but either way, that same song is played during the wedding's big dance scene. Number 7. Bucky Dunstan So the whole Bluey fandom has beef with this guy, right? No way at him, Bingo! Let's see your drawing skills, Dunstan. In Dragon, we get some sweet parent lore and a great lesson. You don't get good at something by giving up. Bandit learns that one the hard way. The kid who criticized his art goes by Bucky Dunstan, who Bandit offhandedly mentions he thinks became a real estate agent. Ugh, Bucky Dunstan. He was in my class. I think he's a real estate agent now. That doesn't look like a car. I kind of gave up drawing cars after that. We thought this was a one-off joke. Little did we know we'd get to see this punk all grown up and worse, trying to sell the healer home. It's kind of hilarious to see that, even today, Banditas is still not especially charmed by him. Banditas, the big B, Bandito! Hey, Bucky, how you going, mate? Number six, the song that made us all burst into tears on the spot. It's impossible to deny the downright magic of the Bluey soundtrack, and the crew really went all out for the sign. That song at the end, you know, the one that helped along all our sobbing, was actually written and sung by Calypso's voice actress. Her name is Megan Washington, and she's a musician for real life, which makes a lot of sense when you consider how stunning Calypso's voice is in the small snippets we've heard from her. Sister Rain has left, and Father Sun is home. Brother Wind comes blowing in to welcome home the gnome. The ballad is called Lazarus Drug, which doesn't quite sound like a Bluey song if you went off the title alone. You are grace, you are belief, you are Lazarus Drug. Upon hearing it, however, we instantly know it's something special. Into a billion pieces, oh, I shine into constellations. 
Number 5. Grandpa Bob In Bedroom, we get an odd little throwaway line from Bingo. At least it seems like a throwaway line. Good night, Grandpa Bob, wherever you are. Why would she say good night to Grandpa Bob? And even weirder, why does she not know where he is? We get our answer in the sign. Apparently, he's been off in India, finding himself. What were you doing in India for so long, Bobba? Well, girls, huh, he was up trying to find himself. Find yourself? That's silly! Why do you need to find yourself? Yeah, you're right here! While this is a funny explanation for kids, it's also led some older viewers to speculate that Grandpa Bob may be experiencing some form of dementia or Alzheimer's disease and has been wandering off. It definitely put a damper on things, but we wouldn't be surprised if we saw these breadcrumbs pan out in a later episode. Number 4. First Steps Callbacks are often fun, but this one hurts. Baby Race made us all ugly cry with its message of running your own race. That iconic scene where Chili turns around in the kitchen to find Baby Bluey taking her first steps is referenced twice in the sign. Why did I decide to walk in the kitchen? I don't know, sweetie. Maybe you just saw something you wanted. The first is when Chili admits she doesn't want to sell the house. So you don't want to move either? Of course I don't want to leave Bluey. You took your first steps in that house. The second comes later on when the family is lamenting about leaving. Chili stands in that same spot of the kitchen looking downcast and it hits so hard. To end this entry on a lighter note, just before this scene, we see Bluey sitting on the front porch with headphones on. For fans of the show's music, you'll likely recognize this as the cover art for Bluey, the album. Number 3. Brandy After the episode that left everyone in puddles of tears, the sight of Brandy had us leaping off our couches. I tell you what, next time I come over, I'm not bringing any onesies. We don't know what changed between now and onesies, but it doesn't matter. Brandy shows up to the wedding with, what's the right expression here, a pup in the cup? That metaphor probably needs more work, but we could not be more excited. She represented so much to so many people, so we can't imagine the decision to have her become pregnant was easily made by the writers. You know how you really want Bingo's cheetah onesie? Yeah, more than anything. But it doesn't fit you, so you can't have it. And there's not really anything anyone can do to make it fit. Yeah. Well, there's something Auntie Brandy wants more than anything as well. As Calypso says, however, life gives us enough sad endings. So we're glad Brandy got her happy one. Why do stories always have happy endings? Well, I guess because life will give us enough sad ones. Number 2. Winton's Dad's House what we thought was a sweet but insignificant background exchange ends up being a huge plot point in Bluey's 28-minute episode. When the water dogs are at the lookout and they spot a house that looks perfect through the binoculars, we see Winton's dad and the terrier's mom out front embracing. Hey, hang on. What's this? What's what? There's a house for sale, and it's beautiful. Ugh, oh, don't tell me that. The last we saw of them was in TV shop when Winton's dad made sure he had good breath before approaching the terrier's mom and the chemist. The next update was the terriers mentioning to Winton that their mom likes his dad, and the rest is apparently history. My dad doesn't live with my mom and now he's lonely all the time. Aww. How mom likes your dad. If you really want to have your mind blown, Winton's dad's house was first mentioned even further back in Helicopter, when he's dropped off and lands in the house's pool. Fly over my dad's house! He has a pool! Oh yeah! I can drop you in it! Where does he live? I don't know! Winton! I know he doesn't live with my mom! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Butterfly Effect This entire list has made clear that the Bluey crew is paying attention. But what if you didn't? What would happen then? Probably nothing, I suppose. Leela and Bingo save a caterpillar in Slide. This caterpillar then cocoons into a blue butterfly they name Flappy. Flappy appears when Chili and the kids pull over in their search for Frisky and indirectly leads them in the right direction. Oh, hello, Flappy. Good to see you again. 
Finding Frisky at the lookout leads to the coin Bluey picked up getting stuck in the tray, and the water dogs later using it in order to spot Winton's dad's place and back out on their offer for the healer's house. Oh look! Someone's put a coin in the wrong slot! <laughs> oh, that was lucky. The butterfly effect actually travels even further back when you realize that, had Bandit not taken the extra time to wind up Bingo and Daddy drop-off, she may not have befriended Leela and the two may have never saved the caterpillar. Oh, lucky! <gasps> That's lucky! Were you able to spot the long dog in this episode? Let us know in the comments. You're everything we're everyone who is or ever was forever. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.